So continuing the series on continue, uh, one thing that came to mind today is what if you don't actually have the capacity to use uh, your local models on your local GPU? Well, you could always host them separately, either on a different machine or on something like RunPod. I tried it today and it actually worked pretty well. Now, you don't always want a bigger GPU for the sake of loading a bigger model. Sometimes you just want better speed, better performance. So on RunPod, you have a choice of pretty much whatever you can find, uh, and they're most most a mix between consumer and enterprise GPUs, but there's also a mix between community and, you know, like, and professional hosted services. So we're going to use an RTX 6000 ADA just because it has 48 gigs of uh, GPU RAM, making it capable of loading pretty much any model that you would want in a quantized capacity. So we're going to deploy that. The only things that we have to do to customize this is to make sure that we have enough disk space for all the models that we want to download and we also want to expose port 11434 which is the olama port now there is an environment variable that we need to set which is olama host and that should be 0.0.0, .0. but as you'll see in a minute we're going to have to set it in the command line anyways because for whatever reason that was not working so with these in place i'm just going to click set override and the actual template we're using for this is just the vanilla pytorch thing we don't need anything special because olama should be able to take care of everything we need so i will click on continue and continue again i'll give you an information breakdown of what the cost is and then you kind of just wait Okay, so once it's deployed, you'll get this dashboard popping up, uh, which you can open and close depending on how many machines you have open, but it'll tell you pretty much everything that you need to know about your machine as it's running. We have options to copy over the command to SSH into it down at the bottom, and we also have these neat little status icons for the ports that we exposed. So over in VS Code, we're going to open a terminal, and we're going to paste in the SSH command that we got before, and we're going to accept all the stuff that it asks. And then all we need to do is head over to Olama's website and copy the install script, paste it in, and it's pretty much as easy as that. In order to run this, we could just do Olama serve, and that will automatically set everything up. So I'm going to open another terminal here, and I'm going to use the same command to get back into the machine, and then I'm going to type Olama we're going to go ahead and type Olama run and the name of the model that we want to use. And on the left, you'll see that we get an output of everything that's going through uh, the Olama instance. And that's the main reason I keep that open. Otherwise, you can always use something like screen or Tmux to hide it in the background. But it's nice to see what's actually happening on the back end. So we're done. And most of these downloads are going to be very snappy just because these hosted machines do have access to very fast Internet. Uh, I can type in what is Django all right and we can see that it is working and we can see exactly how fast this thing is going if I use the command set verbose that will enable all the uh, printed information so if I type it again what is Django ORM at the end we'll get uh, some stats as far as how fast it's actually going we can see that we're getting an evaluation rate of 80 tokens per second and 300 tokens per second So, uh, for the prompt eval. So this is significantly faster than my local machine was able to do. But if we go back to the RunPod instance, we can see that the 11.434 port actually isn't working. So if I go back to the terminal in VS Code and I control C to shut down the Alama service, what I can do is export Olama host equals that. And then we can go ahead and do Olama serve right after. And after that's done, we can see that in RunPod, it's blue now, meaning that it's activated. And if we click on it, we'll get Olama is running. So in Olama, we'll see some of these commands here, which are basically just heartbeats that the RunPod service were sending out to make sure that the port was exposed. Now what we have to do is copy that address that's actually linked to this button. So you can either click it to open a browser window or just right click and do it. And we're just going to copy that in to the model as the API base. API base. Provider is still going to be Olama. We could set a title to whatever we want. I'll just say news solar. I'm going to control D here just so I can copy the model. And that's pretty much it. Now, when we look at our drop down on the left, we can see that new solar is actually installed and we can type any questions.
we'll see how once it loads, this is significantly faster than how it was when it was hosted locally. Even though hosting it locally is still pretty good if you have a decent GPU, this is just so much faster. So if you're actually looking to get any uh, work done in a short amount of time, the cost for the GPU is actually pretty minimal. And then you just shut it, shut it down or maybe save a snapshot of the container for use later. So in order to see how snappy this is, we can actually go over here and command shift down and say uh, edit write an outline or models for a SAS chat app in proper markdown format and that's basically instant and that's the benefit of using a much bigger cloud GPU so I'm going to command shift enter in order to accept all of those and I'm going to delete all this code at the bottom. Okay, so I've started a new conversation. We're going to select all this code and command shift M to add it to the context. And we can slash edit and say extend these model outlines with all the relevant for keys. And we can see it does a pretty decent job of that. I'm going to command shift enter to accept those. And now this is technically a markdown file, so I shouldn't do this. But if we select all of this again and command shift M, and this time I'll say edit, convert these to Django or models. And even though this is technically a markdown file, we can see that it does do a good job of converting straight into the Django ORM format. We can command shift enter to keep that. And we don't get any highlighting because this is a markdown file. If I were to rename this to .py, then this would work fine. And this was just a quick example of how you can use external GPU sources with Olama combined with Continue in order to get a lot faster code execution and completion in order to get a better workflow for uh, productivity. If this was helpful, be sure to leave a comment below and like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video.